Hi there. Thank you for allowing me to style your desk in your home while you're at work. Does this camera angle work for you? Okay, great. And how long is your break? Okay, perfect. So, you've got lots of time to oversee everything and you'll come home to an organized desk set up specially designed to inspire reflection and creativity. Yes, it will include stationery, writing tools, tea and candles, some books, and some more surprises. Yes, that's what's included in your desk setup. To begin, as you can see, I'm just preparing your desk now with a little dusting and I'll follow with some polishing, yes. Now, while I'm dusting away here, let's go over your plans for this fall and recap what you'll be working on at this desk. You've decided that you want to focus on reading this fall. Mm -hmm. And you're about to embark on sharing your thoughts about books by writing book reviews, articles about reading, okay, and book lists, and perhaps interviews with authors. Yeah, a little later on as you develop your craft. beautiful. And this is something new. Okay. So you've shared some light thoughts about books on your Instagram. I see you have a bookstagram account, but you're looking to take this a little more seriously. Is that right? So in which online spaces do you plan to share your book reviews? Mm hmm Yes. I like that. I do subscribe to a few accounts there, yes. And you'll also be interested in one day perhaps sending your book reviews to magazines for publication. Okay, so a hobby for now, but maybe a career later on. Wow, I'm so excited to work with you. And I think you're going to absolutely love what I have chosen for your desk setup. So I've just finished polishing the surface of your desk with a wood protector. Yes, a very natural, very fresh scent. So Let's get started looking at the elements of your desk and the things that I have chosen to inspire creativity for you this fall. When you mentioned that you want to incorporate some thrifted items, yeah, I do consider thrift shopping one of my specialties because
because so many people are interested in thrift shopping and including thrifted elements to their desk setups. So I found this lovely teapot. It's got this gorgeous gold lid here and as you can see some sunflowers here on the side it's so pretty I've never seen anything like it what do you think of this? yeah you were expressing wanting to hold on to summer a little bit and the temperatures really are quite warm this fall it is cooler, yes, cooler than summer, but warm enough that we're still seeing a few blooms. And you wanted to hold on to this kind of golden color as much as possible in the design. So when I saw this, I thought this is perfect for what you were after in terms of color, but also style. So this teapot happens to come with a little mug. Yeah. Look at this adorable little cup. Yeah, it matches the teapot. I was so happy to find this pair. And what I love about a small cup like this, you have to keep refilling it. Yeah, so it's always hot. And um, this will hold quite a few little cups. So you could put a couple of tea bags in there and have nice hot tea for probably an hour. So, with your kettle, I see just over to the side here in your writing space, you can conveniently just pour your hot water into this teapot and have your tea at the ready while working on your book reviews here. You love this set? Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I do have some coasters to keep your wood safe. So, here's the first coaster. And it is for this teapot. Yeah, it's made of cork. It's just plain simple, round. Large coaster. But it will definitely do the trick. Exactly. It was very budget friendly as well. So, and got this little Tiny coaster, perfect for the little cup. You see it's got this lip around here to secure your little cup. So fits perfectly right in there. Now I will be moving around the elements as we build upon the design here. So I'll just place these here for now. For tea, you said that you would like a caffeine-free tea, fall-inspired. So when I saw this, I was really happy because I think this is a newer blend that Stash has put together, either that or I have never seen it in the stores. 
around me. So it says here, enjoy autumn in a cup with the flavors of fresh apple, maple, cinnamon, and caramel. Yes, caramel. Does that sound good? You love these flavors together? Maple apple cider tea. What does it say here? It's got rooibos, hibiscus, natural flavors of maple, apple, caramel, with other natural flavors, cinnamon and citric acid. It's beautiful. I some for myself as well, and I haven't tried it yet, but I'm excited to make myself a cup of tea later this evening. So this is, this is a winner? Okay, great. I'll just set this beside your kettle. Moving along to stationery. Starting with this beautiful, yeah, right? The color is gorgeous. It is like a burnt leaf, a burnt gold. Mm -hmm. Some people might say mustard. Others might call it a curry. Exactly. Those are all good descriptions of this gorgeous fall-inspired notebook. As you can see here, it is spiral-bound. Yeah, I like that too, because it makes it very flexible. Right, you can just turn it back like that. It's durable and it's easy to work with when you're writing. And of course it is ruled. The measurements, yeah, you can see it's a good size. It is 7.25 by 9.75 inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gotten 100. 192 pages in here. The paper's nice, yeah. It's smooth and very cool to the touch. It's good quality. I really like this paper. It does have the date up here if you're interested in keeping track of your dates as you're reading your book. And yeah, exactly. It's nice to keep your work organized like that. So I thought that you could use this for writing your book reviews. You said that you like to start by writing your book reviews before you type them out. I love that method because it gives you a chance to kind of revise while you're typing. So it's like you're writing a second draft by the time you are, yes, exactly, by the time you are typing. So, I know that you mentioned you also wanted a little journal to just keep your first initial thoughts like a stream of consciousness. So this one is more for getting to the actual writing of your book reviews, but I did get you another little journal for your thoughts, your first thoughts as you're reading. Yeah, exactly. 
but I kept in mind the fact that you really wanted to keep a very streamlined desk with not too much clutter. Yeah, I'm like that too because if I have too many things on my desk, I find it distracting. But if I don't have enough things on my desk, I find it a little uninspiring. You too? Yeah, that's what I hear from a lot of people. It's like right between maximalism and minimalism. Yes, exactly. So let me show you the beautiful little notebook that I got with your first reading and thoughts in mind. I know, it is so sweet. It is embroidered, you can see that. Yeah, you can see all the thread lines here. I love this because it's reminiscent of the autumn rose that you see. Yes, I have a few roses still blooming myself and they're a little lighter than this one here but you've got these fall colors. It's a golden green, I would call it. There's hints of gold in the leaves and then a copper rose here and then of course this pink. And these gorgeous vines here. Oh, I know, it is just so beautiful. I just love this design. And I knew you would as well. And don't you just love the way this rose here, this copper rose, goes with this book, this notebook. Yeah, it has a very nice texture. It's cloth. And these flowers and these vines are all raised. And we've got notes here in pink threads. So, on the side. Yeah, it just looks like that. You'd like to see the paper? Okay. So. Again, this I thought could be, this could accompany you as you are reading. Mm hmm And you could just write out your thoughts and not be too concerned with what you're saying exactly just a little stream of consciousness in here to keep track of your thoughts and your recurring responses to what you're reading lots of pages here Exactly, plenty for your reading journey this fall. So place this here. Next, let's talk about some writing tools. And as we move forward, you'll see that I did keep in mind how you want to keep your desk streamlined and in these gold colors. So this is it. I took my time at the pen shop. Yes, and selected a very curated group of writing tools here. 
so that you didn't have to worry or fuss about it. As you're working, you'll have exactly what you need. And in this color theme here of the autumn golds, so we've got two pencils. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'll sharpen these for you. So we've got the two pencils right here. And then a nice black pen. You said that you like the roller ball. So that's what this is. And then we've got this gold gel pen. It's a little different than the usual gold pen I use myself and that I use for clients who are interested in this kind of pen, but I really like it. It's new to me and yes, I, I did get myself one as well. Yeah, because it just has such a nice smooth um, line to it as you write with it. So, um, and then of course a highlighter. Mm-hmm. So you do like to highlight your notes and sometimes even your books, depending on the copy. Yeah. And you write in the margins. I do too. Yeah. Okay, so these... I think we'll do the trick for you. And let's just get these all set up for now. But I will move these into your drawer below here so that your desk is nice and neat. There we go. Nice and simple. But fresh new writing supplies. inspire your process. Now, on the topic of annotation, we were just talking about how you like to write in your books mm -hmm. and highlight them a little bit. And in the gold theme here, I selected these two. They're very close in color, just a little different. This one is a little more orange of a gold, and this is more of a yellow gold. But, yeah, you said you didn't want too many colors, so here we have the sticky flags that will align perfectly with this with this color theme now. I selected some books for you. Yeah, I'm really excited about them. Let me tell you about them now. So here we have an exciting, huge, huge book. The New York Times Book Review. The New York Times Book Review, 125 Years of Literary History. Edited by Tina Jordan with Noor Kwasim. Yeah, I'm ecstatic about this. It is just as it says, um, looks at the book review throughout history from the longest running most influential book review in America here is its best funniest strangest and most memorable coverage from the past 125 years with scores of stories 
stunning vintage photographs, many of them sourced from the Times own archive, readers will discover how literary tastes have shifted through the years and how the book review's coverage has shaped so much of what we read today. Look at the gorgeous dark green, forest green pages here. It's really beautifully put together, of course. So, um, if you look at the contents here, you see there's Chapter 1 covers 1896 to 1921. It has the first issue and all things books, letters, um, reviews, and editor's notes, op-eds. And, you know, chapter two goes along, 1921 to 1946, and then chapter three, 1946 to 1971, and so on through the years to almost the present. I see 2020 here. I thought you would love to study the form of the book review throughout history. And just look at how many pages are. How many pages there are. The birth of the book review. give you a peek. Let's see who's in here. Who's reviewed? This is 1905. Saturday Review of Books from 1905. A recent, a recent And then let's jump ahead here. The heart is a lonely hunter, 1940. 1940 as well here. Ernest Hemingway, for whom the bell. While doing research for you and while putting together a collection of books to have on your desk to inspire you, I did inspire myself, so I will definitely come back to this book myself. I'm going to have to try to get another copy from the library and just sit with it and try to even take it out of the library twice, you know, like renew it so that I can spend some weeks with it. There's just so much to look at in here. The Haunting of Hill House and Pet Cemetery over here. It's incredible. So what do you think of this? Yeah, this is inspiring you. 
Yeah, I thought it would be absolutely perfect for you knowing that you want to get serious about your book reviews. So that's the first of a few books I have here. The next one is called The Writer's Library and the subtitle is The Authors You Love on the Books That Changed Their Lives. Should I read a little bit about this? I'll just take a little bit from here. But again, this is, you know, a book for someone who loves to read. It's somebody who is an aspiring book reviewer. So I'll just read a little bit from here. It says here, America's favorite librarian, Nancy Pearl, and noted playwright, Jeff Swagger, interview a diverse range of America's most notable and influential writers about the books that shaped them and inspired them to leave their own literary mark. It's a love letter to books and a celebration of wordsmiths. The, library, the writer's library is a treasure for anyone who has been moved by the written word. And so, it is chock full of inspiring words about words and books and book lists from some well-known authors. Yeah, you're excited to read this. I thought you would be. So I will put this in your book cart right here at the side. Here is a modern classic. Exactly. You've seen this one around and you've wanted to read it. How to Read and Why by Harold Bloom. Yeah. It says, information is endlessly available to us. Where shall wisdom be found? Is the crucial question with which renowned literary critic Harold Bloom commences this impassioned book on the pleasures and benefits of reading well. So, he gives lists in here of different books to read and these include short stories, poems, novels, plays, it says novels part two, and then he discusses these choices to include them in this book. who'd rather be reading. Here is an ode to all things bookish, a compendium of essays, poems, photos, quotations, and illustrations. Lose yourself in page after page of beautiful contemporary artwork depicting the pleasures of books. Learn how to get even more reading done from best-selling author Gretchen or peruse award-winning author and independent bookstore. 
owner Anne Padgett's 25 favorite books. If you're a book lover, this book's for you. And just a quick peek in here as well. Photographs. Yeah, you sometimes like to include a photograph with your book reviews. Of course, that will make your articles um, really stand out, especially if you love to take photographs. Yeah, you've had a lot of practice with your bookstagram. Beautiful. So, yes. There's lots of different, um, see a questionnaire, interview type of article there, and some essays, and just quotes and things to inspire you as a reader. I've got a quote here from Emily Dickinson. There's a girl lying, looks like maybe under the shade of a fall of a tree in the fall. She's got books all around her. So, yeah, you like that I included something very, very light with this other heavier reading? Yeah, not, not exactly heavy reading, but a little more involved than this one, for sure. Okay, I'm so glad to hear that. I will slip this into the book cart right here with the others. Now, what desk setup is complete without light? And by that I mean candlelight. Candlelight. So, firstly, I have this little old school diffuser. It's a terracotta pot and it's non-electric. So you put the little candle, a tea light in here, and you put some water in here with some essential oils and the heat of the candle warms this area here from underneath and then you get a nice fragrance in your writing space. You love this? Okay, so I thought you would love the color of this. And what I'll do is place this here while I just show you. I got two essential oils. One is this vanilla and I also got you a cinnamon and I thought we could combine them. Oh, you love these scents? Perfect. So let me just open this. Yeah. So I'm going to prepare this little warming pot here for you and we will get this smelling really good in here. Yeah, I can go ahead and light the candles, but I'll blow them out before I leave, of course. But this will be all set for you. When you get back, you can just light them again and this will be in here. So I've just put the water and a few drops of essential oil in here, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of cinnamon. Here's a little tea light that I'll place right in here. And for a little extra light, another additional honey candle, which I think the honey scent, it's very gentle. The scent of the honey will be beautiful with the vanilla 
and the cinnamon in here. So just for a little extra light, I'm going to put this going to move your pens and pencils into the drawer below. Along with these beautiful autumn design for your writing pleasure as you pursue your journey into serious You love it? You can't wait to get started. I'm so happy to hear that. Well, when you come home tonight, you will light these candles and fill up your teapot here with some tea and get started with your writing. It was my pleasure. I'm so happy to hear that. Well, I would love to hear how it's going, so please do check in after a few weeks with this setup. Okay, thank you. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>